At this time, if I could call tonight's meeting to order, Kathleen Allen, Tom Chapa, Brian Chetney, Heather Del Conte, Brandon Legault, Here. Linda Serino, Here. Samuel Tripp, Here. Ruma Kawaja. Here. At this time, if you would join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Next on the agenda is the floor to the public. If I could please remind you that you have a three minute uh, limit. And the first person is Colton Dryden. Colton, could you please um, stand and um, state your interest, please? Karen, I'll be quick. Sorry for you. I'm sorry. I just wanted to remind um, the board and the, the public that um, we will not be responding. We're just going to be respectfully listening. And then if there's questions, we'll follow up with you afterwards. OK. Um, so yes, uh, hello, my, my name is Colton Dryden. Um, I was here a month ago uh, in regards to Sugar Pop Warner. Um, so I am the president. Um, uh, Last time we spoke, um, we were looking for a solution to um, the field usage for our home games at the middle school um, and the charging of the uh, prices given to us for the janitorial services to be utilized on Sundays for our games. Um, when we had discussed about this, um, we were hoping to kind of get a um, one way or the other for the season we're just started. Um, and when we reapproached at the following board meeting, um, we had mentioned that our backup plan was the community of Palermo. And they have so graciously taken us in. Um, and we've played uh, one of our home games there, as well as one of our other home games we played at Cicero. Um, with that being said, um, when we uh, reached out to the city, and the city reached out to us after a little more of a, a public stance um, through our Facebook page, um, they invited us to a city council meeting with the financial board last night, um, to which they had voted and approved um, a memorandum of agreement um, that I have right here with me. Um, I also dropped one off to the office this morning, as well as I think Mr. Lego has a copy as well. Um, the memorandum of agreement basically stated that the city would agree to pay $1,000 for the remainder of this season to try to get as many of our home games back into the city of Oswego for this year as well as whatever cost it would take for us to play our home games in the, at the middle school field uh, for next year. Um, so uh, we were kind of hoping to get this utilized, uh, voted on as quickly as possible so that we can possibly move any of our home games back because unfortunately our season is midway and the, uh, the sooner we can get moving on the ball with that, the sooner we can bring back the remainder of our two home games to the city. Uh, so I just wanted to make you guys aware and just kind of give you the updated information as we're getting it. Because um, like I said, it was immediately last night, so we're immediately here. Uh, we have another board meeting for our organization on the 29th, and so if any other information comes up by then, uh, we'll be sure to be at the next board meeting as well. Thank you. Thank you. Next would be Jim McKenzie. Jim, if you could please stand. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Jim McKenzie. I'm from the town of Oswego. Uh, I think that these children coming out looking to do athletics, it's a spectacular thing. The wellness aspect of the district, sports is a wonderful thing and we need to spend money in our capital project for that. What I ask the board to reconsider is the use of artificial turf as part of that project. Um, I've sent an email to the board members, to the administration, and was suggested I should maybe come down and talk a little bit. I'll offer myself at any time you would like, whether it's in this committee or in the facilities committee. But I think there are some real reasons why natural turf really would be the way to go. I think they fall into the aspects of human health. There are known toxicants in there. We know that they escape from the field. We don't know a lot about what happens afterwards. But in my field, which I have studied environmental toxicants now for 13 years, primarily focusing on heavy metals, which are found in this artificial turf. Our philosophy usually is none. 
you know, um, we know we live in nature, but we don't want to contribute to it, if at all possible. So there's a human health aspect for our children. I think there's also an environmental aspect, all right? Living as close as we do to this great lake, a lot of the things that are present in there have special toxicity to aquatic life. And setting up that here, I think we really should rethink that, to be honest with you. And the last one, which I'm not an expert in, but I've been trying to read as much as I can, is I think there's economic reasons why a natural field actually would be better than a turf field. Again, all of these things are up for debate. Um, and I ask that you just simply <coughs> consider them more before investing all of this money into things that we may regret later on. Um, my big thing is trying to think about how the next generation would live. And I know our current kids are growing up in an environment where they really want to work towards environmental stewardship. They care about the environment. And to knowingly put this artificial turf in there with how many ever tens of thousands of recycled tire rubber, uh, I just don't think it's a good idea. So again, I ask you please to reconsider. I'd be happy to talk to the group as a whole, individuals and private, the facility committee, and lend any kind of input that you know you may want. So thank you very much. Thank you. Next on the agenda is the superintendent's report. We have um, just a couple things I wanted to touch on tonight. The first one is that uh, today was the first of my monthly student lunches. Today I had lunch with seven students. Um, members of the Agriculture Club, and we had a nice time talking about a, an agricultural field trip that's being sponsored by Cuba Community College in the upcoming weeks where 20 of our students in the newly formed Agriculture Club will be traveling to three different agriculture sites um, to look at dairy farming, to look at a variety of other things, and we're expanding our interest in um, inquiry into the possibility of expanding um, agriculture education embedded into our core curriculum and so we had a nice time and we that's something that I'll do monthly. I want a reminder too about the pageant of champions on Saturday which is a premier event for our music program. Um, remind folks about the athletic events that are posted on the website regularly and also to just plug meet the teacher night at Soto High School tonight. Next on the agenda is the consent agenda. There's five items. Minutes of the regular meeting of September 3rd, 2019. Approval of the Plains Auditor Report, July 2019. Extra Classroom Activities Fund Report for the Oswego Middle School and the Oswego High School, August 2019. And the Special Education Report of September 17th, 2019. Could I have a motion? Move it. Second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Next is curriculum with Carrie Place. We only have one item tonight, and this is the 2019-2020 uh, state program for our entire state. This is year three that we've been going into. This is the after-school program where we won the grant for it. So this is the breakdown of how the funds are set, in, set for the year 2019. Could I have a motion, please? Move. Second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> Next is personnel with Dr. Sweeney. Um, the process I started last time where I kind of lumped some things together, if that's okay, we'll do the same thing tonight. Um, one, professional staff resignations. Two, leave of absence requests. Three, extra comp for an in-service instructor. Four, extra compositions, FLS and FPS, related to the after school empire plan. Five, homework helpers, FLS and FPS. Six, orchestra director for Minetto. Seven, club positions at the high school. And eight, extra compositions, new club appointments for the middle school. If I could have a motion, please. Move it. Second. <coughs> Second. Well, was this one, was this one? One, one, one through eight? Any discussion? Yeah, I just, I just have a question. And the Agriculture Club of Co-Advisors, uh, there's no stipend, is that what we have? We do it for one year, yeah, and the then pilot. it works out, pilot, and it, yeah. yeah, I think that's a great program. Oh, yeah. I like it. There's a lot of interest in Central New York. Yeah, good. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 
and number nine. Mm -hmm. I had a request to read these individually, so I'll do five by individual lines. Uh, the first line, boys versus. Heidi, there was a, I'm sorry, who requested? I did. Boys varsity basketball head coach, James Lamachia, 8274. Motion. I'll move it. Second. Second. Any discussion? I'm opposed. Opposed? Yes. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 And opposed. Opposed. Boys JD basketball head coach, Bob Connolly, 6660. Motion, please. Move it. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Boys modified basketball head coach Brian Green, 5160. Motion? Move it. Sec second. Second. Was Green? Green, did you second? Or same? Same. Sam. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Boys modified basketball head coach Brad Shannon, 5160. Motion? Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Girls varsity basketball head coach Joseph Babcock, seventy-seven seventy. Motion. Move it. Second. Second. Any discussion? Opposed. All in favor? Aye. 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 Girls JV basketball head coach. Wait, wait, all those wait, in wait, favor, wait. aye. And then opposed. opposed. Girls JV basketball head coach, Ryan Lavner, 6660. Motion? Move it. Second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Girls modified basketball head coach, Brad Shannon, 5160. Motion? Move it. Second? Second. <clears throat> Any discussion? Yeah, just, just a question. Uh, two people are being appointed for boys and girls. Do they practice together and have the games together? And how does that work? Rhonda? In terms of the process, do they practice together? They do. They share a gym together, but it's winter one and winter two. Different times. Two different seasons. Yes, two different seasons. Thank you. Wait, I don't think I quite understand that. Two girls modified. Oh, because the seventh and eighth had different teams. Yeah. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Boys varsity ice hockey head coach Kevin Ahern, seventy nine fifty nine. Motion. Move. Second. Second. <coughs> Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Boys varsity ice hockey assistant coach Adam Mahalski, sixty four forty three. Motion. Move. Second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Girls Varsity Ice Hockey Head Coach Mark Fierro, 6876. Motion? Move it. Second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Girls Varsity Ice Hockey Assistant Coach Ben Hector, 5365. Motion? Move it. Second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Boys Varsity Swimming Diving Head Coach Josh Lurch, 9030. Motion? Move it. Second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Boys Varsity Swimming and Diving Assistant Coach Kevin Morgan, 7351. Motion? Move it. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Boys Modified Swimming Diving Head Coach Patrick Bond, 4512. Motion? Move it. Second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Boys Modified Swimming Diving Assistant Coach Catherine Celeste, 3492. Motion? Move it. Second? Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Varsity Wrestling Head Coach Mike Howard, 8274. Motion? Move it. 
Second. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Modified wrestling head coach, Steve Radish, 45-12. Motion? Motion. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Modified wrestling assistant coach, Sean Nagel, 3330. Motion? Motion. Second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Co-ed varsity indoor track coach, Dominic Pike, 8211. Motion? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Boys modified volleyball head coach, Josh Carney, 4584. Motion? Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Girls modified volleyball head coach, Sarah Del Bronco, 4440. Motion? Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Girls Modified Volleyball Head Coach, Eric McCroby, 4656. Motion? Move. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Varsity Cheerleading Head Coach, Catherine Ferletti, 6822. Motion? Move. Second? Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Boys Varsity Bowling Head Coach, Bob Colfer, 5400. Second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Girls Varsity Bowling Head Coach, Kristen Maxson, 5278.50. Motion? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? <coughs> Opposed? And then um, 10, the last extra curricular volunteer recommendations, sports volunteers. Motion? Ooh. Second. <laughs> Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, and then 11, support staff recommendation, resignations. 12, support staff recommendation, leaves of absence. 13, support staff recommendations, probationary. 14, support staff recommendations, permanent. Uh, 15, a creation of title. We did need to amend it to make it plural. That is the civil service world. In order to hire more than one sub nurse, it needed to say more than one nurse. And then 16, our sub and temp employees. Can I have a motion, please? Move that. Second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Next is finance with Dr. Sweeney. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> my piles. One, two, three, and four are related to the tax assessment and the tax warrants. A motion? Move it. Second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And then five through ten are agreements and various contracts. Could I have a motion, please? Move it. Second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> Next on the agenda is student representative discussion. Did you get any items um, Nothing much is new. We're going to be having our first student council meeting on Thursday in which we will discuss the pep rally and spirit week. Um, otherwise, there is no other news. Great. Thanks. Fantastic. Next is items from the board. Um, I had a meeting again with the Osorto County Board on Monday. Uh, we did finalize our fall group meeting. Um, it's going to be held on November 7th at 6 p.m. at City. Superintendent and our board um, are being requested to be there. 
because it, it's going to be an important meeting and we'd like to really bring all of the counties together. The first presentation will begin with um, Brian Heffron of PTEC and talking to us about the program again, but also some of the successes that they are seeing now. Um, and then after that, because we're going to be heading into budget talks and, and such, we've invited um, Patty Ritchie and um, Will Barkley. They've both agreed to come. And um, they'll talk to us a little bit about what they're sensing as far as the climate in Albany. Um, we as a board and superintendent are being required to sit and come up with one to four um, focus questions. And we're trying to stay focused on county. How can they help us countywide? So we probably would need to take some time at some time and sit. Um, there will be food served and our yeah, public, my attention. <laughs> our public justice um, <coughs> will be coordinating parking. And um, I am really going to encourage um, all of us to be at this meeting because we really want to show the representation from this county to Patty Ritchie and Will Barkley. What's the date again? It's um, November 7th at 6 o'clock, and I'll keep reminding you, but I would love to see our board there. Oh, that city? Yes. What do you have to meet the 7th? November 7th. Yeah. I think it's a Thursday. I think it's a Thursday. Um, they're really, I'm enjoying being part of this group. They're, they're very knowledgeable and they're very proactive as far as knowing what's going on, knowing who to talk to. So I'm, I'm also learning a lot. Um, it's a little different than years ago when I was in. So I'm really going to advocate for support. We appreciate you representing us there, and I think this sounds like an important opportunity. Thank you. Any other items? Yeah, I just have a question for the superintendent. I received a correspondence of mail from the, I think it was from the school district, or maybe it was from Aetna, about a informational meeting being held Thursday morning at 9 o'clock at, at the high school theater. There's also a second meeting at 1. Does, any, does anybody ever driven up at 9 o'clock in the morning? Buckner Boulevard and try to find a parking place? Well, we do have a plan. Sure, please. <laughs> so I've been working with some of the different groups, and okay. I have an email to go out tomorrow to the FLS and the high school folks just to make them aware that this meeting is being held. We uh, talked to the security officers to make sure that Buck Boulevard is clear of folks who typically are coming up and parking in spots that maybe they shouldn't. And then for some of our only <coughs> folks who might need assistance getting from wherever they park to the theater, we are going to use the golf cart, and so there'll be a shuttle service so back and right. forth. So if you need to park in one of the side lots, which hopefully you won't have to, but if you do have to. Um, is there not school Thursday? There is school. The trouble is we're working on a really tight timeline for January 1st implementation. So we couldn't hold off and wait for a day when kids weren't here and we had to go with a combination of when the Aetna representatives were available and when the theater's available. Parking may not be such a big issue at 1 o'clock, but that 9 o'clock meeting, because late parents, they park in the little parking lot. They, I mean, they're all over the place dropping the kids off, and they get there like 20 minutes before school starts, taking up parking places. It's, but few folks who called us, we've said, we won't, we won't start right at 9. We'll wait till everybody gets in the theater. So if you're coming down Buck Boulevard and you're closer to 9, the hope is by then, the bulk of the FLS parents have dropped off and vacated. Okay. Well, I won't have a I'm going to ride my bicycle, but Good. there are some okay. more people. <laughs> but we will have a shuttle, a shuttle golf cart if, uh, if needed. Yeah. I just wanted to prepare you because yeah. you'll be hearing about it. <laughs> We've been talking about it. Okay. Yeah. Folks, it's going to be tight. Yeah. I'll pick you up. Sam. I don't need a ride. I'm good. <laughs> Any other items? I just wanted to thank the board members who were able to come to the retreat. Randy, we missed you. And to remind everyone that um, we discussed, um, you know, making sure that we develop the, the goals for our mission statements. And um, though one or two one-liners are due into Karen by Friday. 
Thursday. 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 Friday. Thursday, Friday. Yeah. yeah. And I did that's receive Linda's so far. Heather, uh, oh, she went over a <laughs> <laughs> I've been away. That's why. I uh, uh, what What is the our intent? Are we going to each each board member can submit two to three, and then are we going to pick? Three, and I think we're going to compile them. And I imagine there's going to be overlap, so then it will just be about um, producing semantics and making sure that it um, it is the correct filters that we want to well, use for making our decisions. Okay, but we're not going to end up with 15 nope. or 16 goals for two to three. That's it. Okay. So we're going to take compile every ones, and then you're going to get it out to people to take a look at, yep. and then we'll be able to. I, I imagine there's going to be quite a bit of overlap, which will be great. You know what I mean? And if not, because then Brandon, we want them really kind of global, global. very global, yeah. Yeah. yeah, very global, so that a lot of variables can. Yeah. Be underneath with, to accomplish that. Goal. Well, then I got to spend some time here this week, so that it'll be so I have. Oh, okay, good. Great. Good. Good. Did you get the um, okay? We got the yeah. materials from the retreat, which is good. Yeah. Okay. And would there be a need for an executive session tonight? I just have a couple of things left. Um, oh, I was going to ask about the director of food services. If we heard or were anywhere on that, or so because it's an ongoing personnel matter, I would feel more comfortable putting out a confidential memo to the board. Okay. If that's okay. I just want to stay on something. Sure. Yeah. And then, um, obviously, we had some representatives here for the Hot Warner. What is our plan on getting back to them and, um, with the feedback that we received in the meeting from the um, city last night? Or what's, what, what's the time frame? Are we going to talk about it? Or, uh, I received uh, nothing. I will tell you that. I received absolutely nothing. So you obviously were privy to something. I received absolutely nothing. So this is, all, this is all new to me. So. So I think as a what board, I just we should probably talk about it, discuss it. Well, we or we lay eyes on it would it. be important. It has to be bad and bad legal, certainly. Yeah. If there's a reason to yeah. have to Well, I don't know. I'm a little confused because if the city yeah. decided to grant yeah. money to an organization, there should be not, it shouldn't even involve us. It should just go directly to the organization. And then they can use the money if they well, want to use it the for... The funds were to be used towards, um, if needed... The Sunday costs. The Sunday costs of us providing the field for their last several home games. And they, and but they could they provide that be. money they directly to Pop Warner and we don't even have to. Yeah. And we would absolutely so does have that. facilities available for them. Yeah. So I don't, we don't have to sign anything for that. That is the standard policy that if you have the money to pay for Sunday custodial, which is time and a half, of course you can use the services. That's that's for any non-for-profit. Well, I just think yeah. that there was some clarification that needed to be for that. I don't. I don't think no, so. No, no, I no. think we've said that all along. Yeah. And yeah. it's been a talking point. I think one of my frustrations is the um, uh, media, you know, Absolutely. Facebook, et cetera, and people that, you know, haven't been part of the discussion and the communication back and forth really missed the process in which we've been through. With, and we talked with them. I think they've been here two or three times. We followed up, um, and there was a lot of miscommunication that I was reading. Right. And I think I sent a, um, an email off to say, "Oh no, I think it was one of one of our goals under the broad mm -hmm. goals is how do we put those fires out with the facts when it's you know." So that's going to be a discussion along the way, you know, how do we communicate the facts and those hot, uh, hot items, you know, tickets that people are talking about, because I was like reading this stuff thinking, it's not, it's true. not how yeah. I it's remember not things, you know. And it is very, very disappointing when you see it not only put out by an organization that doesn't list all of the facts, but also then uh, reshared and and I will be honest when it's reshared by community leaders it is very disappointing to me especially if they've not reached out to get the t all the of the facts, facts. Yeah. so I will I will tell you I reached out to a few community leaders who did do that and I offered my cell phone and I said if you want to fact check something before you repost it because I think people assume if you're a community leader you have fact checked something yeah, you put on yeah, social media yeah. And when that was not happening and I was seeing community leaders do it um, at the county and the city level, it was very frustrating to me. So I, I yeah. did um, offer my cell phone and said I'm available anytime if you want to fact check 
before you uh, promote things that aren't the full truth. And I and I tr I really believe that you know under the suggestions I made for um, our goals for this year is talking about how can we stop that, and that's a great idea. Is having you know the the um, board president be able to say, wait a minute, you know, call because what you're seeing on Facebook and Twitter and all this just it's not what happened. Exactly. All they have to do is sit and watch um, our board meeting. We have that, don't we? Put still put that on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh yeah. You know, and so if you want the facts, community members, get on and watch your board meeting, and then come to us with concerns. But to just go well, so on social that media misinformation. Is very challenging. Social yes. media is very very challenging because you don't want to engage with it. But at the same time, it is very frustrating, as Heather described, to have inaccuracies be spread and spread and spread and spread, and you have community leaders chiming in and giving an opinion, and they don't know what they're talking about. Yeah. And it's, you know. And I would also suggest that if a board member has missed a meeting, that they watch the board meeting. Yeah, we put it on, you know, so that you're not out of the loop. If you miss it, watch the board meeting so that you're on the same page that we need to be on because I know when we had our board retreat, one of the uh, things we talked about is building community, a positive culture and climate. And the only way we can do that is to be as transparent as we can, which we're trying to be. And so those are the issues the board's fighting with every day. That with your absolutely. Yep. And there isn't a board member on here who doesn't have the absolute best interests of any uh, child children's organizations. We all have a passion for the children's organizations that we work for, and we have their best interests at heart. And we do have to be fair, and I think we are fair, but we definitely want to help where we can. And I'm thrilled that the city wants to give Pop Warner money. That's fantastic. Any other items? Could I have a motion for adjournment, please? Motion. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. <laughs> <laughs> you may adjourn. Oh.